All right, like you said, I'm Catherine Fries. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Indianapolis where Dave is from. And I'm Erin Beckloff. I'm an assistant professor of communication design at Miami University. We would like to introduce you to our friend, Dave Peet. We'll come back to that. <laughs> it's not playing. It's playing. Oh, audio. Initially, the thing that really got me into being interested in 19th century printing was the purchase at 50 cents of a specimen book. This was in 1945. But I opened up this little book that was an 1873 Franklin type foundry in Cincinnati and saw all these beautiful, fantastic Victorian faces, very ornate, and I fell in love with them. I got goosebumps right now just thinking about that first experience I had seeing this specimen book. I didn't think that I would ever even have one piece of that type be able to feel in my hands. I'm basically a collector. I was very fortunate to start actively in 1960 because many print shops were going offset. I was very, I won't say aggressive, but very active in finding it. Most of the stuff I have would have been scrapped and lost essentially forever. I didn't get my first press until 1960. It was the beginning of the collection, and I said when I got it, I'll get six fonts to type, and that's all I'll ever need. I didn't think there'd be any out there, but look what I've got now. <laughs> Including wood type, metal type, and border, close to 4,000. There's a lot of metal there. The type, is the most important thing. Not only am I preserving it, but I use it. You have the euphoria of finding something for your collection, but then you can research it, find out who made it, who designed it, and if there's a patent on it, and so forth and so on. 15, 20 years ago, I thought letterpress would die with me. There was very little interest in it. But I think it's very important for a few of us to try to save it. Like Dave, Aaron and I found letterpress as young professionals, each from varied backgrounds, engineer, designer, studio artist, all of us educators in some form. Our unusual friendship was forged by our dedication to the preservation of letterpress printing and its community. Letterpress brings together unexpected groups of people spanning long distances and generations. Generous with knowledge and willing to teach, Dave opened up his shop doors and discovered, and we discovered his abundant collection. We knew it was important to preserve his legacy. Dave's fascination with letterpress printing began 73 years ago, at the age of 13 with the purchase of his first type specimen book. An engineer, coming from a family of artists who were active in their creative communities, Letterpress combined his mechanical mind with his value of aesthetic, setting the foundation of a lifetime of engaging and collecting. Inside his basement shop, he introduced us to his unbelievable wood and metal type, ornaments, electrotypes, wood engravings, tools, matrices, printing equipment, specimen books, and ephemera. Driven by the ornate beauty of the Victorian period, the focus of Dave's collection and our talk today is his 19th century metal type collection. With the metal type, in addition to the individual fonts, he amassed runs, type families, and cast his own type. The pursuit established meaningful relationships and rivalries with other collectors of similar interests. The thrill of the hunt led him to unlikely sources that ranged from backyard chicken coops to auctions of printing houses. They were often family events 
And Mary, Dave's extremely tolerant wife, found herself in search of type on their honeymoon. Early on, he purchased Victorian recastings from the American Type Founders Vault, and in the 1990s attended the ATF auction. From dirty, dusty basements across the US, these fonts would once again be put to use. During his first 10 years of collecting, Dave began producing printed works, highlighting his acquisitions in various forms. The most significant is the one-line specimen book, a means of organizing and visually preserving his collection. Just as Dave educates us and other young printers, Herb Harnish was a mentor and friend who helped him get started. Dave was inspired by Herb's pump handle press specimen book, which documented both historical and anecdotal provenance of his type collection. From 1961 to 71, Dave printed 38 pages of specimens. Even in his early collecting, it's obvious he appreciated the beauty, range, and complexity of the Victorian faces. One of the most creative endeavors Dave has produced are his yearly calendars, which replaced the Pete family Christmas card. They were made as a means of solicitation and camaraderie amongst other printers for 50 years. Each of the 12 months highlight different aspects of his collection while demonstrating his agility as a printer, often co demonstrating complicated compositions with multiple colors. Dave's calendars became a playful continuation of documenting his one-line specimens. Highlighting the breadth of his increasingly unique collection, these also other calendars featured the months of a two-color Moorish run, exquisite Bruce faces from longtime friend Bill Allen, and his most favorite, sectional gothic and sectional graphic, which he found hidden in a type case he'd purchased from a museum on Printer's Row in Chicago. He honors the individuals who he acquired or inherited type from. Seen here, these fonts were from Dave Greer in 1992. Other calendar pages are biographical in nature about Dave and his family. Here you can see his childhood illustrations, a recipe from his very tolerant wife, Mary, <laughs> and artistic contributions of his father. At the heart of his collection are the stories about how it came to be. In addition to the printed works, Dave recorded quirky tales that focused on the people and shops he encountered over the last 58 years. Dave would call these discursions of a type collector, and they were the stories that he first shared with us long before Aaron and I saw the type. Dave was fortunate, or destined, to be collecting and rescuing type when Victorian styles were available and letterpress printing was being replaced by new printing technology. This led to a massive influx of collecting. While the calendars were favored, the one-line specimen silently waited. After decades, thinking the one-line specimen would remain unfinished, his relationship with young printers gave him renewed hope. Just like Dave, we value people and the craft. As educators, Catherine and I had the opportunity to lead the effort to revive documentation of his collection. We share the belief in the power of the combination of narrative and artifact. We proposed and received a research grant that allowed us to create and engage our students in the PEAT project, picking up where Dave left off in 1971. The Inquiry Collaborative Grant outlined these goals. First, preservation through organization, research, proofing, and recording the collection in a database. The second set of goals focuses on the longevity and narrative of the collection by engaging the print community and investing in our next generation of printers. Dave has a very particular method of organizing his collection to prevent corrosion and sustain life of the type while making it possible to efficiently store thousands of fonts. In these custom-made boxes, he fonts up each character in a specific order. The type is protected by sheathing it with corrosive paper on top and bottom. Top and bottom. On each box lid, he records pertinent information pertaining to its origins, including the foundry, designer, size, name, previous owner, as well as when and by whom it was placed in the box. 
A large part of this grant was providing funding to hire qualified students to manage the day-to-day -day efforts of the PEAT project. During meetings weekly, Dave taught them his methods, enchanted them with his stories, and delighted them with his collection. Meanwhile, Aaron and I implemented new procedures to ensure that we used research methodologies for not only the benefit of the collection, but for the students as well. Borrowing from Herb Harnish's documentation, Dave prints 21 pica specimens. Each line illustrates his amassed collection. Above the specimen is the point size, name, and code. The coded system indicates the foundry and source of acquisition. Throughout this process, the students worked closely with Dave to identify the missing typographic and anecdotal information as related to the coding system. While his methods of record were effective in their day, with the help of information systems expert Andrea, the PEAT project team is able to input the large quantity of content into a searchable database. Utilizing the resources of the University of Indianapolis Print Shop, as well as the collective efforts of our students, we recreated the one-line specimen template in multiple. This included searching through the collection, typesetting each line, creating the content of the line, identifying the appropriate information, and finally proofing three pages at once. Here we were able to place the personal, the quirky, and the biographical, the illustrative content and illustrative content into the specimen book. The students, Anna, Kalia, Kyle, and Lauren, were insightful, diligent, and productive, completing 40 additional pages to the original 38 in two and a half months. This work will be continued throughout the coming year. The PEAT project provided a formalized means for the students to interact with Dave and his type on a regular basis. By doing so, they have real ownership of the work. Together, we are creating a shareable narrative that has immediate connection to the students. It is our intention to make this work widely available as a means of fulfilling Dave's desire, to, as a means of fulfilling our desire to preserve Dave's legacy. I would like to leave a legacy. There are a lot of uh, new people, often young, who are interested in letterpress. I am sharing my collection with others. I am very pleased that other people are interested, particularly young people, and that I can get them started and hopefully they will continue the interest. Why am I generous with beginners is mainly going back to when I started. People were very generous with me, not only in information and training, but in actual hard things. And I would like to pass that on to others. And I warn people, it's a disease. You get really interested in this, and it gets out of hand. <laughs> It does. <laughs> we realized the PEAT project at times seemed like a daunting undertaking. 4,000 fonts of type, artifacts from a time gone by. But what sustains us is preserving Dave's unintentional collection, the community of letterpress peers and friends. Through our admission, love of the craft, those printers, their stories, our stories, intertwine and will for generations to come. We'd like to take this time to thank all the people involved, most of which you see here on the screen, and also to show you what the, uh, the end product will become for the, the peat specimen. Thank you so, so much. That was great. Thank you.